Hello you guys, welcome to day 16 of Ab Camp. This is a really exciting day for me. First of all, you guys have been through a solid two weeks with me over two weeks of Ab Camp. You are likely really feeling it in the deep core. You're starting to really notice muscles that you may never have really noticed you had before. You may be seeing some personal transformations, maybe some slimming and toning, maybe some increases in control as far as even bladder control. Sometimes working these core and pelvic floor muscles can show you improvements in your pelvic floor strength and health in as little as just a couple of weeks you might be improving coordination and control so I hope that you're starting to see some of these changes today's routine is definitely intense we are going to go to our ab camp bonfire so prepare yourself for a serious burn in the deep core muscles that's the point of today's workout is the bonfire so get ready Maybe grab a glass of water. Maybe be prepared to take a break and a time out if you feel like it's too much and your muscles just are exhausted. Take a rest and then get back into it. Always be sure that you're being safe and listening to your own body's cues. Don't push yourself beyond the point where you can go and learn to tune in and trust your body and its signals. If you're just joining me today for the first time, then please stop and go back to the beginning and work your way up to this point. So if you are ready, let's get started. All we're gonna need is a yoga mat and let's go. The first thing we're gonna do before we actually get into the deep abdominal moves, the traditional ab strengthening moves, is we're gonna do breath of fire. This is also called Kapalabhati breathing and it's a wonderful way to wake up the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles and the back, everything. Definitely the breathing diaphragm. So all of the muscles of the core are gonna be working here. Now you can be sitting either cross-legged or on your knees if that's comfortable for you, or you can grab a block or a bolster and put it under your hips, or you can sit in a chair. So sit somewhere where you're comfortable. A chair is just fine. I'll let you grab whatever you need while I explain the breath of fire. So what you're gonna do is sit up nice and tall wherever you are. You are going to engage your pelvic floor and your low abs, lift your chest nice and tall, and your arms are actually gonna be up overhead with your thumbs pointing inward toward each other. Try not to let your spine round forward like this. You wanna be lifted, so you're really working your back muscles, your back extensors. So lifted and tall. Your face is pointing straight ahead. You can close your eyes if you wish. And what you're gonna be doing is little short, sharp exhales. So I'll show you from this side. You're gonna be doing tiny little short, sharp exhales. So your belly expands when you inhale, and then you exhale by pulling your belly button to your spine. Your inhale is actually passive. You just don't even have to inhale actively, it just happens. Your, your active part of this breath is actually the exhale, the pulling belly button to spine. You can do it very slow and controlled, or you can go fast if you have a lot of control. You can go very fast. We are gonna do it for one minute, okay? You're actually really gonna feel this. It's a great workout. Despite the fact that it's just breathing, it's an excellent workout. So get ready to do this for one minute with your hands up overhead. All right, lift your hands up overhead. Thumbs are pointing inward toward one another. Again, be sure that this isn't happening, especially as you get tired. You lift up nice and strong. Shoulders down away from your ears. You don't want this to happen. Shoulders down and relaxed, thumbs pointing inward, your fingers are curled like so. So lift, you wanna inhale, and then exhale part way, and then inhale into your chest and begin. Remember, it's short, sharp exhales. Think of little tiny sniffs out your nose, little sniffs, exhale, 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 passive inhale and little sniffs out. Keep 
keep going, you're doing great. Stay tall and lifted through the core, lifted and lengthened through your spine and the crown of your head. Your shoulders are probably burning just a little bit, but please keep going, you've got this. Feel the work throughout your core, your abs. You're almost done. Just a few more breaths. Start to slow it down, slow it down. And on this next exhale, hold it. Bring the thumbs together, hold it, hold it. All the air squeezes out. And then release. Allow your belly to soften very carefully. Let go. Okay. Hopefully you really felt that root lock, that mula bandha lift at the end, the low belly pulling inward, everything really lifted, even your diaphragm lifted as you exhaled all the air out of your lungs. If you didn't get that today, do this video again in the future, come back to it, and I think you're really gonna learn to love that breath of fire for really firing up the core. All right, so, we're gonna get right into our exercises as if you haven't already had enough. So take just a small minute to come into cat and cow pose. So just a quick little exhale as you round your spine and then an inhale as you arch your back. And then an exhale, round your spine, tuck your tail under and an inhale, arch your back one more time. Exhale, round your spine, inhale, arch your back. And sit back onto your heels, round it up, and come onto your back for our very first move. You're actually gonna come onto your side. I'm on my left side right now, and you are gonna keep your knees bent off to the side, and we're gonna do an oblique crunch. So this move right here, this oblique crunch, is an abdominal crunch, but for most people with prolapse and diastasis recti, this is actually gonna feel okay. Now, a traditional crunch can put a lot of downward strain and pressure on the pelvic floor, and it can make the abdominal muscles split apart and tent up if you have diastasis recti. This is really working a different set of muscles. It's not working your rectus abdominis, and it's not putting so much straight downward pressure on your pelvic floor. So give it a try. If it doesn't feel good for you, then stop. But if it does feel okay, then keep going. Engage your pelvic floor before you start. Engage your pelvic floor. Pull in your lowest band of abdominals toward your spine. And then you are going to exhale as you lift your head and your shoulder off the floor. So you can keep this left arm down on the ground and just put the right hand behind your head. But make sure that you exhale and pull your belly button to spine. Try to make your head light as a feather. You're not just cranking up on your neck. And exhale, pulling that belly button in. Again, if this feels like it's not good for you, then don't do it. Play with whether you wanna try using both hands. That might feel good for some people. And play with, again, just whether or not this feels good for you at all. If it doesn't feel good for you at all, do a couple of bridges. Bridges are a wonderful core strengthener and they're safe for almost everybody. They're a great alternative when you're not comfortable with the move. So if you're ever at an exercise class, like a group fitness class, and they're doing a move that you're not comfortable with, do some bridges. It's a great way to still be working out and getting some core strengthening on, but not hurting yourself. So 10 more, nine, Eight, seven, six, belly button to spine. Four, three, exhale as you crunch up. Two, and one. Okay, so roll out that top shoulder and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So knees now to the right for me, it might be your left. And you're gonna, I have my right hand down on the ground. My left hand is behind my head. 
lifting the pelvic floor, pulling the belly button to the spine, and crunching up. <sighs> pulling that belly button to the spine. <sighs> if this move is not right for you, then do those bridges. It's a great alternative. Belly button to spine, crunching it up. Maybe experiment with having both hands behind your head, if that feels good. Or just leave that right hand on the floor. Feeling it right here in the obliques. And 10 more. Nine, eight, keep exhaling as you crunch. Six, five, belly button to spine. Three, two, one, hold it, and down. Ah, on your back, rock out those legs. And come to the middle of your mat and take one quick bridge. So now everybody can do a bridge. Even if you were doing bridge before, you really can't get enough of these great, this great strengthening move. I love it for the back of the bottom and the hamstrings and really your low back. It's a wonderful move for your whole core. Even if you already did a bunch of bridges because you weren't comfortable with that last move, go ahead and do another one. Deep inhale and exhale, keeping your bottom lifted and high and then roll it down. Okay, roll onto your side. We are gonna go into a side plank with the hip dips and then a front plank with more hip dips. So <laughs> prepare yourself. So bottom knee bent, top leg straight, elbow is right under your shoulder and you are going to engage your core and lift into a side plank. Now, let's go ahead and see if you can Really support yourself, press down into the floor, and then stagger your feet so that your right foot is in front of your left, so one foot's in front of the other, and you're really pressing down into that elbow. Now, 20 times, we're gonna lower and lift, lower and lift, exhale as you lift. Ten more times. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop down carefully. All right, I'm going to take a second to set up this next move for you. I want you to be in a plank position from your bent elbows. Now, Really engage your core from the bottom up, pelvic floor on up through the low abs. And you can be from your knees. You don't have to be in the full plank from your elbows and toes. You can absolutely have your knees bent and on the floor for the next move I'm gonna show you. You're gonna be doing tiny little hip drops to the left, repeaters. So I'll show you now in real time. Then come onto your toes, make your feet nice and wide and then down to the left and back up to the middle. Down to the left with your hip and back up like you're going up half of a rainbow, up half of a rainbow to the middle of a rainbow and then down the rainbow. Up to the middle of the rainbow and then down. 10 more, 10, nine, belly button to spine. Seven, exhale as you come up, six, five, four, Three, two, one, and knees down. Carefully sit back. Oh, deep belly breaths. Okay, round it up, and we're gonna do the same exact side plank move on the other side. So we started with the elbow side plank. Bottom knee bent, top knee straight. 
and you are going to use this hand to support yourself as you come up into the full staggered foot side plank. Elbow directly under the shoulder and 20 times we dip and lift, dip and lift, exhaling as you lift. So 20 times total. Tiny move. Ten more. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Use those abs. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, come down. Oh my gosh. All right, come down onto your knees. Sphinx pose, sphinx position right here with your elbows right under your shoulders and lift belly button to spine, come up into your knee position and then tuck your toes under, lift belly button to spine, wide legged plank, now come down to the right side and then up to the middle of the rainbow, down the rainbow on the right side and up to the middle, down and up, belly button to spine. 10 more times, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, belly button to spine, three, two, and one, knee down and sit back, child's pose. Round it up. And we're gonna end with two more moves on our back though. So come down through your side, onto your back, and your abdominals are really gonna, your pelvic floor is gonna lift, abdominals pull in, find that neutral spine position, so definitely no arching. You wanna really lift, pull inward and upward and lift and one leg up and then the other. Drop one leg at a time. Down and up. Make sure that when you drop the leg, your low back does not arch. So don't let this happen. Do not let this happen. You wanna keep everything strong and engaged through the core as you straighten one leg at a time. If you want more work, you bring your hands behind your head, either on the ground, or lift it above the head. Don't let your legs go down so low that your low back arches. If you can only bring them down a little bit, that's okay. If you can bring them down all the way and keep control of your spine and pelvis, then that's okay too. But just listen to your own body. <sighs> Exhale with exertion. Exhale as you bring the leg up. Belly button pulls in, in, in. Your knees can be slightly bent. They don't have to be super, super straight. You should be getting pretty tired by now. So let's only do four more on each side because we still have one more move. Two more on each side. Belly button to spine. Last one here. Okay. Oh, hug the knees to the chest. Oh. Bring that left knee to your chest, right leg long, just for a brief stretch. And then switch. And our last move today is called slalom. It's one of my favorites for getting a deep, deep, oblique burn. So here's what it looks like. You're going to lift one leg, really pull belly button to spine, lift the other leg on an exhale. Bend your knees slightly, toes are pointed, and try to look at one spot on the ceiling above you. Try to keep your toes in the same general spot in the ceiling as you drive your hips and knees to one side and then lift your hips and go the other way. So my hips are going to the left, my knees are going to the right. And now I lift my hips with my abs 
and my hips go to the right as my knees go to the left. So again, I use my abs to lift my hips. My knees are now going to the right and I lift my hips and my knees are now going to the left. So abdominals pulled in the whole time and again, keeping the feet in the same general position on the ceiling, really driving the hips and knees side to side. Keeping the knees together, trying not to let them flare apart. Low abs pulled in, in, in. Ten more. Ten. Nine. Eight, abs pulled in, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and done. Oh my gosh, knees pull into the chest, really hug everything in. One more of those nice knee to chest stretches with the other leg long. Stretch it out. Deep belly breath. Other side. I think it would feel good if you have the time to stay for one more stretch, which is simply a twist where we bring both knees up, then shift the hips to the right about an inch or two and drop both knees down to the left. Twist. Oh my gosh, I just heard my back crack. Maybe you heard that too. <laughs> look your head away from your legs. So my legs are going to the left and my head is looking to the right. Try to keep both shoulders on the ground. If you want more of a twist, you can wrap your top leg so that it's under your bottom leg. So wrap it, but be careful, that might be too deep. So just listen to your body. One more deep breath. And now carefully untwist yourself. If you were twisted, bring one leg up and then the other. Hug the knees into the chest, recenter yourself. And you are going to drop your hips or shift your hips over to the left about an inch or two and drop both knees to the right. Hold on with your right hand to your left, to your top knee. Look your head over your left outstretched arm. Deep belly breaths. Again, if you want to, you can wrap that top leg, my left leg, so that it's under the bottom leg. But that might be too deep. Just shift in this and see what feels good for you. Don't do anything that feels like it's too deep. Okay, very carefully unwind yourself if you were wound up. Bring your knees up. A couple of little bridges to help get yourself back into center and just hug those knees into your chest one more time. Deep belly breath. And then hands behind your thighs and rock yourself up to sit and face forward. I just want to give you a thank you again for being with me throughout this journey. 
We just have two more days left of the ab camp, and so we're almost done. I hope that you really felt that today. I'm pretty sure you did, but I hope you felt it in a good way. If anything ever felt like it was too much or uncomfortable, always remember to stop. I hope I've made that clear throughout this ab camp. It's very important to listen to your body. I will see you tomorrow for day 17. We are gonna have a talent show tomorrow. Day 18, we're gonna pack up and go home and I'm gonna give you some exercises you can take with you beyond this 18-day ab camp. But tomorrow, remember, talent show. So be here, get ready, it's gonna be a good one. Until then, remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter.